Hello, what is up everyone? Welcome into another episode of Bolt Breakdowns here on the Guilty as Charged podcast YouTube channel here with ESPN's Jeremy Fowler here to talk everything Chargers. He was recently in El Segundo for Chargers camp. So Jeremy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me. I'm uh, headed home from a long trip on the West Coast. <laughs> um, what what other, have you just gone to Chargers camp or have you, you hit all the training camps there? So I did 10 camps. I started with the New York Giants, flew out, and then just did a big U-shape around the West Coast. So Denver, Seattle, uh, Santa Clara for the 49ers, and then there were five teams in L.A., uh, <laughs> Chargers, Rams, Raiders, Saints, Cowboys, and then flew down to Arizona for a day. See the Cardinals, now I'm headed back to the East Coast. All right. Good. I'm glad to get you back on the East Coast after all this time. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's much yeah. needed. Um, no let's talk a little bit about Justin Herbert first. Obviously, the injury. Um, you you said on a Sports Center hit earlier this week that the feeling in the building is not uh, panicked regarding this injury. Yeah. Um, what 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 have you sort of gathered there? Yeah, I just sensed from the people I talked to you know, a little concern, but not panic. As in, if he's going to miss significant time in the season, that would be a panic meter rising. But they. They do hope and believe he'll be ready for week one. Could be a pain tolerance thing with this kind of injury based on what I know about it. So uh, he's shown the willingness to play through pain if he has to. You know, but they're hoping it doesn't come to that, that this time of healing, two weeks in the boot. Uh, you know, if he needs a little longer, I imagine they'd give it to him now because, you know, they they want him now, but they need him in a month from now. So uh, it, it seems to be trending well for the most part. It's not I, I, people I talk to just say, look, it's not ideal. We'd love for him to be out there getting reps, but uh, it's not a dire situation by any stretch. Right. When you say uh, pain tolerance, is this something that you expect to kind of still go into the season in terms of, you know, him having to take, you know, whatever he kind of needs to play, but that foot yeah. still being affected? Because that was um, Adam Schefter earlier in the week uh, kind of did a hit where he sort of said he expects that to be the case. Um, yeah. So I'm just kind of curious. Obviously, the Chargers haven't given us a lot of information to work with other than injury to plantar fascia. But, you know, is yeah. that kind of the expectation that is that's what he would have to ultimately play through? Yeah, I don't know for sure from the Chargers standpoint, but just typically with that injury, that can be an issue. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, it depends. If he gets proper rest, maybe it heals up on its own. Um, it's just if it was... For sure, if he had injured it and this happened during the season, he'd probably have to play with it all year because you'd sort of keep aggravating it the more you press right. on it. You know? So, you know, maybe the situation where he has to take some sort of pain medication on game days, you know, we've seen a lot of guys do it over the years. Uh, that's not ideal, but it's just something he might have to work through. So I don't know the time frame of, like, when that injury is supposed to heal up completely pain-free versus, like, hey, you can move on it, but it's going to be a little painful probably somewhere in between by the time the season starts, I'm guessing. Moving on, uh, just from Herbert, uh, what are some of the other things that sort of stuck out to you at training camp? Yeah, so you know, the offense was a little rough the two days I was there, but, you know, talking to Greg Roman, the, the OC, it's some of that's expected because, yeah, you have a, you're sitting a lot of guys. You know, Herbert's out, Lad McConkey's out, some others. But – you know, things you might not run for Easton stick normally, but you still need to install it and get ready for the season. So it might not look great on a, off, on a practice day where you're working on something specific, you know, and hope it, hope it pays off down the road. So I wasn't, you know, too worried about that. Um, I think, you know, the pass rush really stands out just from what I saw in the joint practice with the Rams. You know, Bosa was – was whooping up on people on the on the edge a little bit. You know, the Rams were depleted on the offensive line, so that showed a little bit. You know, they've had some injuries there, but I think Bosa's kind of on a revenge tour a little bit. And, you know, when a guy like Bud Dupree is your third or fourth uh, pass rusher, that, that's pretty good. So that, that really is going to be a strength of their team. It's going to work through things. Uh, you know, talking to Jesse Minter, the D.C., seems really, sh like really, really sharp, young coach. So I'm curious to see how he – disguises things to, to get the best out of that defense. You know, I think they'll be pretty good on that side of the ball. It's just offensively, uh, do they have enough firepower yet, you know, b between some of the injuries that you have a quarterback, J.K. Dobbins is still working his way back. 
Uh, the wide receiver position is still a bit of a wild card. That's why I wanted to see McConkey out there because, you know, I hear good things, and he's kind of that sudden mover, do-it-all receiver uh, that they can move all over the field. I, stay, I still think he'll be that. He's just kind of been down uh, for the count injury-wise lately. Yeah. Also, you know, what is kind of the perception of this team around the league? I remember reading your top 10 list that you do every year, and the Chargers had Herbert, Slater, Derwin. Um, but, it, you know, like you mentioned with the wide receiver position, it doesn't feel like this team is getting hyped up to the extent, you know, they had uh, Keenan, Eckler, Mike Williams in previous yeah. years. So is the expectation that Roman, you know, kind of get right into it this year or that there might be kind of some growing pains in installing this heavy ground game offense around her? Yeah, a little bit. I, I suspect some growing pains to an extent. That doesn't necessarily mean they can't have a successful season. Uh, but the star power has diminished some, and that, that seems pretty obvious. You know, this was a team that was always lauded as like, wow, look at the talent, the star power they have. Like, they, if they just put it all together, they'll go from nine wins to 13 wins, maybe make a Super Bowl run. You know, I, I don't, there's not a feeling about the Chargers like that right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that I'm not open to be proven wrong a little bit. You know, you look at Joe Ald, the, the fifth pick. He looks the part. You know, they might have a great left tackle, a kind of generational type guy. Uh, if he pans out, and then you have Rashawn Slater. And you compare those two together. Or excuse me, I think Alt's on the right side now, right? But you know what I mean. Just the bookend tackles could be really, really good together. So maybe the, you know, I can see the line being a, a little better than I thought. So, you know, they, I'm counting on Jim Harbaugh to be able to figure out how to dictate terms offensively and even if you're not scoring a bunch or having a bunch of explosive plays, you're figuring out a way to win the game uh, through time of possession, through um, just being able to run it when you need to. And obviously Justin Herbert, we know can make timely throws. So, you know, it's, they've lost a little star luster, but they're, they're still, I would say as talented or more talented than half the league, you know, it's probably somewhere there. Right. Speaking of Jim Harbaugh, which I'll get to now, is the feeling, you know, at training camp from the people that you've talked to in the building that this culture really has kind of rebounded from, you know, what it was last year, obviously, uh, the fall of Staley. You know, we hear a lot about, obviously, Harbaugh kind of getting there, but obviously has it translated on the field? And is there, you know, I guess a positive impact also just off the field in terms of uh, the, the chemistry and, and where everything is right now? I think so. Anytime you have to transition to a new voice, you know, it's, it's usually going to be welcome um, that, that maybe things had uh, got you know, reached a boiling point. Chargers were really pretty close there in the Staley era because they had two years of pretty good regular season play. Um, and then that last year, they were really close to having a lot of wins. You know, they just the game in Green Bay comes to mind really close in a lot of situations where Many of those star players were injured. So, you know, I don't necessarily think it was just a, a roster where the head coach's voice fell in deaf ears. It's just, you know, it's, it's a combination of a lot of different things. But that said, when you not only have a new voice and new energy come in, but it's somebody of the stature of Jim Harbaugh, it gets people's attention. Uh, you know, talking to Derwin James, he's like, hey, Jim Harbaugh is very different. His approach is different. You know, the, the way he talks and acts is different. Um, you know, rarely do you see a coach getting involved in individual drills and doing some of those things that he does. And the, the way he speaks about his messaging, uh, it's just unique. He's a quirky guy. So, but what's become pretty clear is that the message is consistent throughout the building. They want to be who they are. They want to be that team that nobody wants to play. Uh, the veterans are treated well. They get off days. They get, uh, you know, their, their input is taken into account by the head coach and he might change things based on what he hears from the players. So, you know, they feel like they have a voice and that everybody's uh, voice is impactful and included. Yeah. um, You know, there were these clips of Harbaugh pulling linemen on sleds at camp and, you know, putting cleats on and and doing the drills with them. And I know Joel kind of uh, pointed that out uh, in his comments the other day. Um, Speaking of Harbaugh, you know, the Michigan violations did come up uh, in a press conference on Monday. Um, is there an actual belief anywhere that that turns into anything in terms of his NFL tenure? I know the NFL's had different 
kind of versions of that with Tressel, who, you know, had to take some time off. But, you know, then Pete Carroll wasn't as punished uh, by the league coming over yeah. from USC. Is there any thought that, uh, I know that, that Ian Rappaport once uh, reported this, that uh, there could be some kind of consequence for Harbaugh as a result of this? Consequence inside the NFL? Yes, just inside the NFL. Obviously, he had the, the showcase order that bans him from college football. For years, but, you know, certainly with the league's code of conduct, you know, the, the personal conduct policy does, a, does apply to coaches, um, that you have a certain decorum and, and uh, ethical approach to the game. But I haven't heard anything hard and fast that, that the league's going to punish him in any way. Um, you know, certainly if he needs to go back to the college game, that's a factor. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Chargers – it's something they vetted pretty thoroughly, I think, going into all this. And, you know, Harbaugh's staunchly denied any wrongdoing. So I, I haven't heard a lot of momentum one way or the other on that. All right. Um, I guess outside of that, which players uh, are you kind of looking forward most to watching this year? I know you mentioned Joey Bosa, who you said uh, was on a revenge tour. Um, you know, other than Derwin James and those guys, what, you know, are there, was there a specific player that kind of stuck out to you at camp who maybe either has a contract coming up or is this yeah. kind of a pip year for it? Yeah, I'm always kind of looking for sleepers or players that are maybe under the radar that are rising when I go to these camps. You know, Christian Fulton, the cornerback uh, they signed, came to mind. You know, I was, in fact, I was talking to somebody in the sideline with the team and they were mentioning he had been playing well. And then two seconds later, he intercepts a pass. Uh, by the sideline right where we were standing so that was pretty timely but you know he's been opportunistic it looks like you know they need steadier defensive back play overall and so you know if he can come in and be a contributor right away that helps um you know quentin johnson's really the big question mark right like they drafted him thinking you know we need somebody who's going to be great at yards after catch creating explosive plays to sort of offset what they have with keenan allen and Mike Williams. So now those two are gone. What role does he assume? Like, do they need him to do more? Or, or at this point, are they just trying to bring him along slowly? You know, I think they, you know, the expectations aren't going to be too great where he has to be a star right away. But, you know, they do need steady production. And they'll be kind of circling in four or five different guys out there. You know, DJ Chark, I had heard, has had a really good camp as a veteran presence. You know, McConkey will be a big presence. But, you know, they need Johnston to capitalize when he does get those yard out for catch opportunities and it sounds like he's had some drops which you know you see out there on the camp reports and on twitter but i don't think it's something that the chargers are overreacting overreacting to in any way you know they the new regime had a really good file on him they really liked him coming out of tcu regardless so they do believe in the player right yeah and obviously quinton kind of has to take on more all this year or there at least will be or yardage available in the wide receiver room post Keenan Allen and Mike Williams to yeah. uh, then make up. There, you know, there were clearly some drops, right? Uh, I, I think a lot of that stems kind of from the over-the-shoulder mechanics issue, which was sort of also the case yeah. in the Green in the Green Bay game you mentioned. Uh, I ultimately, you know, he'll kind of determine his season from there. Um, what is the temperature around the league as to what the Chargers can do this year? Because you mentioned just, you know, the lack maybe of top end talent, certainly on offense, uh, maybe that they had compared to previous years or got injured in previous years. Um, but is there a lot of faith in the in the league, uh, in, in circles that you talk to, that this is a team that can, you know, either contend for the Chiefs uh, this year or is that more of a long term approach, uh, I guess, towards building this with Jim Harbaugh? Yeah, I would say mostly a long-term approach. Um, I don't. I haven't talked to anybody in the league who expects them to beat the Chiefs for the division. But right. the division outside of Kansas City is very wide open. You know, the Raiders are clearly in transition. You know, they don't expect to score a lot of points this year. To be honest, they expect to have a really good defense and manage the game and manufacture points. Uh, the Broncos are clearly in transition. Could be turned to rookie Bo Nix. So there is a window for them to sort of fight for second place in that division. Maybe split with the Chiefs uh, in the two games they play. So I think mostly a long-term play because teams are still waiting to see how the Chargers are going to build this thing. They know they're going to focus on the run and, and try to get the most out of Justin Herbert by not only giving him some some well-defined throws, but also protecting him with play action in the running game. So uh, considering just some of the injuries he's had and some of the hits he's taken in the sack. So 
long term, people are betting on Harbaugh getting it done. It's just this year is a bit of a wild card for everyone. But, you know, one scout told me when they hired Harbaugh or this offseason, like he's won everywhere he's been, you know, he's proven that. So there's no reason to think he won't do that, uh, whether it takes a year or three years or whatever it is. I'll get you out on this one, but what is the storyline that kind of most will determine the Chargers' success and or failure in 2024? Hmm. What determines the success and the failure? I'll go to the running game and the running backs. You know, Gus Edwards is proven, but maybe not flashy. But J.K. Dobbins is really interesting to me. And you mentioned players that stood out, but, you know, he's still kind of coming back from that Achilles a little bit, but he should be fine. But talking to Greg Roman, he said he's as good as anybody when he's healthy. He's just, his career has been marred by injuries, but he's really explosive. So if he can get all that back, He's on a one-year kind of prove-it deal. Uh, that could really pay off for the Chargers, and they're going to use them because Greg Roman knows how to use them. So I'll say like that interior offensive line, you know, Zion Johnson and those guys have to fulfill their potential with the backs I mentioned. Like that, that's where I think games could be won or lost for them a little bit. Yeah, and obviously they're going to be a team that's, you know, handing off the ball more than they've been accustomed to uh, in the Herbert era. Uh, last thing, but... If you had to put a record prediction on this team right now, uh, where would you put them at? I'm gonna go go somewhat safe here, like either eight and nine or nine and eight. I think it's okay. Nine and eight, eight if you want the YouTube, if you want the YouTube like bar to be higher, but that's good. Yeah, I'll go <laughs> but, eight and nine. I got eight and nine. Right all right, there on the cusp. <laughs> right there on the cusp. Well, Thank you, Jeremy, uh, for joining the show. Really appreciate it, uh, and have a great flight. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah.